Good afternoon. Just before I start, uh, I've allowed an extra long, uh, I guess, question and answer time. So I'm going to go through some of these topics to do with live production uh, a little bit slowly so that you can write down any questions you might have and then we can uh, have a Q&A at the end. So good afternoon. My name is Martin Sinclair. I'm the founder of vMix and today I'll be talking about live production, in particular portable live production. Um, and also giving a little brief overview of some of the technologi technological advancements that have been made in portable live production and then moving towards some of the tips and tricks uh, that you might not have heard about uh, or might find useful if you're doing live productions out there in the field. So first I'd like to quickly highlight some of the technological progress that's been made in the past few decades and how that specifically benefits those doing live production. Um, earlier this year, a mobile processor was announced from NVIDIA that's a capable of one trillion calculations per second. Um, that's a processor that will be available in the latest cell phones that you'll, you'll find available for sale over the next six months. To put that into perspective, back in 1995, there was a Cray supercomputer that only just achieved the same level of performance and cost upwards from $20 million. So you can see the progress in technology in the industry as a whole, just in computers, has gone from an entire mainframe into a mobile phone processor in just two decades. So if it's possible to fit a supercomputer in your pocket, what does that mean for live production? It means we can now replace an entire production truck with a single system. Or to put it another way, we've gone from truck to TSA approved. Pictured here, for example, is the vMix Go that we sell at vMix. And this is an integrated eight camera live production system in a single portable unit. So you truly can go from a production truck that may have a, a team of 10 or more staff on hand for the various uh, aspects of the production into a single unit, a single operator, maybe with a backup operator, and then your camera operators. So you can see how the technology has dramatically reduced what is needed to do a live production. So to facilitate this, there has been a, a, a lot more all-in-one solutions in the live production market. Traditionally, even with all this technological process with streaming and live production, you still needed to provide a couple of devices and combine them together. You may need a switcher, you may need an audio mixer, um, and then you may need an encoder to put that on the internet. Well, that's all changed in pretty much in just the last few years. Now you can, you can purchase a single system that combines switcher, video player, recorder, streaming encoder, title generator, and audio mixer within a single unit that you can carry around with you. For example, we have the vMix Thunder. That's a laptop-based solution that allows any laptop with Thunderbolt uh, to be turned into a complete four-camera live production system. And as I mentioned before, there's also the vMix Go. Um, but in general, the industry is moving towards an integrated system that can combine all of these hardware solutions that you may have previously purchased to do a live production into a single solution. And I want to provide a case study of how this live production solutions have been used in the real world. And the biggest case study uh, that I want to bring to you today is about the NAB show. Um, each year the NAB show reaches you know, anywhere upwards of 80,000 um, attendees and there are a variety of live shows going on throughout the week. As the NAB show specialises in broadcast and production, there are a lot of opportunities there for live streaming productions, and in particular Teradek have taken the initiative since 2012 of producing a live show that's broadcast through Ustream and which reaches up to 500,000 viewers. So they produce this content of interviews, reviews, educational content covering the entire spectrum of the broadcasting industry. So they may have guests on there from Canon or Sony talking about their latest cameras. They may have other uh, companies talking about drones and how you can use them in video production. So there's a whole diverse array of different topics and they run the, their requirements were to run this production four days 
um, up to nine hours a day non-stop live streaming, uh, very few breaks, continuous coverage. The system that they required needed to be portable because they didn't necessarily have a lot of booth space available and it also needed to be reliable. As I said, the live stream ran for four days for up to nine hours a day and reached over 500,000 viewers on Ustream. Um, the system that Teradek asked us to provide for this show required them not only to switch cameras but handle anything the show might throw at it, including video playback, graphics and titles. In response, we sent them the vMix Go. So you can see here, there's a little photo up there um, on the screen of the Teradex set. There's a stage there, there is the white couch where the guests would come on board and talk uh, about various topics or give reviews of the latest uh, products available at the show or they might be um, providing educational content. So there was uh, panels throughout the show where they would discuss anything from color correction to what cameras to, to use in film. So we provided them with the vMix Go, as I mentioned. There are some of the st statistics, as I've already mentioned. Four days, nine hours a day, 500,000 viewers. Here is a quick workflow overview of how the vMix Go was used in this particular live production. So you can see over there in the top left uh, was the vMix Go, which was used for all of the switching, for all of the videos. So when the interviews were completed, they would show an ad reel of the various products that were part of the Vitec group, uh, which Teradek is a part of. And then they would show graphics and titles of the various guests coming on board. Uh, you could see there that they used these robotic cameras uh, up the top. Uh, they used a roaming Sony camera. Um, so the, the guest may have a product that they wanted to show. That's how you, you get the close-ups. And they also had a laptop handy. So some of the guests on the show, I recall, had uh, a web page they wanted to show. So they would plug that in and they'd be able to show the web page to the viewers. Then there was a separate audio mixer that was used to bring all the microphones on stage together before sending a final mix into the live production system. And then you can see there over in the middle is a Teradek cube, which was used for streaming. Even though the vMix Go can be con configured to do live streaming to showcase the capabilities of the Teradek cube, they opted to use one of the SDI outputs on the vMix Go to power uh, the Teradek cube for streaming. And of course, the vMix Go was configured as a, a streaming backup to Ustream. And then as the guests, uh, sometimes we wouldn't know the names of the guests coming on board on the show. So, that with you know, only a couple of minutes to spare, usually needed to quickly enter in the name of the guest to throw up on the lower thirds. So we used a separate laptop for that. So the vMix Go provides a web interface you can load up on any laptop within the local network, and they're able to go in there and set up the titles for the guests that are about to appear on stage. Here's a behind the scenes photo of the vMix Go in action. So you can see all the SDI connectors over on the side there went to the uh, video cameras. Uh, the audio inputs are just behind that. And then you can see the interface on the screen. It has the preview and program and then all the various sources, uh, video clips, graphics. And then there is a little, in the corner there, you can see some of the audio level bars from the built-in audio mixer. So now we're gonna go through some of the tips and tricks that I've learned in particular in doing live productions over the years. Um, you may have heard of a lot of these before. I'll give my you know, uh, rationale behind them, why I think they're handy tips for live production. And then as we move towards the question and answer uh, section, I could throw that open for any general questions with live production out there in the field. So my first suggestion is to go with SDI cameras. Now you can get a lot of affordable HDMI cameras these days for live production but they tend to be a bit difficult to use with regards to the cabling. So if you're at a, you don't know necessarily what a venue is going to be like, where the camera is going to be um, in respect to the switcher, you need to make sure that the cable so cabling solution is flexible enough to handle those long distances. And SDI is really designed for that. You can run up to 100 feet of cables. You can get slimline SDI cables, so they're easy to uh, move around corners. And they also have a locking connector. 
So anybody who's had experience with the mini HDMI ports available on video cameras these days will know how much of a pain in the neck that can be. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, the SDI cables can get slimline thin ones now that do full HD um, and are great for traveling since they're lightweight. That's what I personally use when I'm setting up cameras um, at various trade shows. In addition to going with SDI cameras, if you're at the stage at the moment where you're planning to build your own live production uh, solution from scratch and you haven't yet bought the cameras, I would highly recommend looking at all the cameras out there and choosing one particular camera model for your entire setup. So four cameras of the exact same brand and model. The reason for that is to do with color correction and white balance. Every camera is a little bit different. So if you choose the same model, you won't have to spend time matching them in software or in the switcher or in the color correction in the cameras, they will all be equally matched by choosing the same color balance and white balance settings in camera. And that's a huge time saver. As far as specific models go, the two that I've personally used and really like for their portability and for the built-in SDI ports they have available are the Sony X70 camera and the Canon XA25. They're both really nice compact cameras um, but they also have the full professional feature set, including SDI, and they can both could be found for under three thousand dollars. They're great value as well. The second one might be obvious to many of you, you live production veterans out there, but keep an inventory checklist. I found this especially important. Uh, for all the various little cables and adapters I might be using in a live production, just to keep track of what I've packed for a particular show, and then when I've unpacked it back at the office, I can make sure everything is still there and chase up the venue if something went missing. Um, and along those similar lines, marking equipment with colored tape is also very helpful. In particular, for the NAB live show at Teradec, there were three sets of crews, with each with very similar equipment, all working within the same area. For example, there was us from vMix with our equipment. There was also Teradec with all of their equipment. They were uh, pulling out SDI feeds. They had cables and equipment and adapters as well. And there was also the live production crew, the guys that were doing the live switching. They had their own audio mixer, uh, monitors, cables, cameras, and so on. So with all of this stuff getting jumbled up, it was very easy for us to mix up our equipment. But thankfully, um, each of our teams had color-coded equipment, so it was very easy at the end of the show, after four days, to quickly pack everything up. One thing is very important from a quality perspective, and this is request graphics and videos from your clients ahead of time. The main reason for this is if they give you a low quality MP4, well, hey, you've got the extra chance there to request a higher quality MP4. Uh, perhaps they gave you a 720, but you want to do a 1080 production for archival purposes. You could go back to them and request those HD video clips or higher resolution graphics so that the final production you, you hand over to the customer is at a lot higher quality uh, thanks to that forward planning. And then finally, this goes without saying, but test everything. In particular, the network speed of the venue if you're doing live streaming. I've been in situations where the venue the previous week has been able to do eight megabit for streaming, and so we would probably set somewhere between a five or six megabit stream to allow that headroom uh, when streaming at full HD. But then the next week, it, for whatever reason, with the network provider, it dropped down to five. So continually testing the network ensures that you can pick and choose the, the best bit rate for the stream ahead of time. And also um, pay careful attention to choose a stream bit rate that is a, leave a plenty of headroom that's a bit lower than the maximum network speed available. So you may be able to send out a high quality HD stream if you're going really close, close to the network speeds available, but you might find that things change throughout the show, that there's a bit more buffering from the end viewer. End viewers in general, um, if, if based on the statistics and talking to them out in the field, they much prefer a lower quality but stable and reliable stream, far more than a high quality full HD stream that may be buffering every few minutes.
So now, as promised, I've opened it up to some questions. Um, whether you have questions about live production in general or about the vMix solutions we have for live production, um, any questions you might have, now's the time to ask them and I'll do my best to answer them. Yes? Yes, so good question. With the vMix Go, um, this is an integrated PC that's been custom designed to do live production. So it has built-in hard drive, it has a full copy of Windows installed. So you could install your vetted, you could even conceivably install your video editing software on that system and the files are ready to go, ready to edit uh, once the show's complete. So yeah, there's built-in hard drive storage. In particular with our vMix Go, uh, there's four drive bays. So you can install plug and play storage. If you say you're doing two different shows in one day, you could just bring in two hard drives with you in the bag and swap them out between each production. Yes, so with vMix, it does full chroma keying live, uh, including virtual sets. Yes? Uh, so there's a built-in uh, character generator built into vMix that has uh, templates. You can design your own templates. And so that's all integrated in there for the switcher operator to bring up those titles. But you can also, once you've set them up in the switcher workflow, you can log into our web page. So the switcher actually creates a website for anybody in the local network to log into, and that web page gives them the ability to switch cameras if they need to be remotely, or they could go in there and select the titles and add various title presets for all the various speakers that are coming up. Yes, so as it's a web page, you can load it up on your phone, tablet, laptop, um, any, any Wi-Fi enabled device with a browser can work. Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you have limited uh, network access and you want to do live streaming, what I recommend is the various uh, bonded solutions out there. Um, so the advantage, for example, with the vMix Go, if you don't use the built-in network streaming capabilities, you could use the SDI output to something. For example, uh, Teradek makes the bond product, so you could choose various USB dongles from the various um, uh, carriers uh, out there so that you can combine them together and do streaming that way. So that's a great way to get a high quality stream with limited network access available. Um, and vMix is an open platform, so we can stream to wh whichever provider uh, you like or whichever hardware device you, you uh, like to use for the streaming side of things. Um, and um, I wanted to mention as well, we have a, a booth out there in the exhibits hall if you wanted to visit, it, visit us after this session um, and ask any uh, questions you might have uh, as well. Um.